On the 19th of July, 1936, elements of the Spanish military rose against the Spanish Republic. And they uh, precipitated a revolution in parts of the country, in particular in Barcelona. Um, forgive this silly get-up, I'm actually dressed uh, like a anarchist or anarcho-syndicalist, I suppose, uh, militiamen of 1936 who uh, went off to fight against uh, that military rising and also to make an anarchist revolution. Anarcho-syndicalism. The form of anarchism that simply refuses to die. Um, I mentioned that communism, Marxist communism or authoritarian socialism is a thoroughly discredited ideology now, thanks to uh, the end results. Um, Anarcho-syndicalism is a type of uh, socialism that refuses to go away. It's still uh, one of those things that uh, a lot of people discuss, and a lot of people think, wouldn't that be a good idea, and how would we put it into practice? Now, a lot of people don't really know how anarcho-syndicalism works, or what it if one can even say that it works, or what it actually means. Well, I've got a link below about um, the uh, Barcelona Rising, the 1936 uh, uh, Catalan Revolution that um, attempted to uh, transform society into an anarcho-syndicalist model. And there's an interesting little exchange that takes place there, or actually it's a monologue by a Barcelona anarchist, um, who said that, well, here's what we did in order to institute uh, the economic model that we thought uh, was the ideal one. He spoke to the manager, I believe it was, of a textile mill. Um, this fellow that was interviewed in the video was... Uh, I believe a union official in the National Confederation of Labor, the Confederación Nacional del Trabajadores, uh, this uh, trade union here, an anarcho-syndicalist one, the CNT. Um, and uh, he said to the manager, um, if your shift starts at 5 or 6 o'clock tomorrow, like any other day, just show up and... Um, and uh, show up then and do what you normally do in the course of a day. But yesterday you were a boss. Tomorrow, things are going to be very different. That, to me, encapsulates anarcho-syndicalism. Um, what he was implying was, or what he was saying was, there aren't any bosses anymore as of now. We all go back to work the way we always did, uh, the way we always do, and we do what we always do. We make textiles. We run a factory. But no more bosses. No more, and no one else telling us what to do all the time. Um, no more being lorded over by people who use their control of this uh, big factory um, against us as a means of coercing us. There's not going to be any more coercion because there's not going to be any more boss. There's not even going to be any more owner. We're not going to go and shoot the owner. We're not going to go and say, sign this over to us or we'll kill you. We're going to just keep going on as we did before. But this factory doesn't belong to anyone anymore. There are no more owners of this factory. Now, that's kind of a simplistic view of anarcho-syndicalism. Uh, but if you ask me, in a nutshell, that encapsulates it. The economy would continue to function the way that it functions right now. Um, there would be some uh, alterations, but essentially, the only difference would be that uh, no more coercion and no more private ownership of the means of production. It doesn't mean that a, a redistribution of wealth takes place, i.e., we... Uh, all rush out to the rich part of town and loot them and uh, and uh, take all their goodies away from them or arrest them or uh, whatever. Some of that did, did take place, I'm afraid, but that was a nasty period, a violent time in uh, Spain's history. But uh, surprisingly, little took place. Um, what it was was they simply shook off the owners and said, okay, things go on the way they were before. 
But now, we all decide how things are going to be run. Now, of course, we know what the objections to that are going to be, um, and uh, they usually have to do with uh, human imperfection. In other words, uh, greed, laziness, um, pilfering, this sort of thing. How do you prevent any of that from taking place without coercion? What if people just don't want to come to work anymore? All that sort of thing. Now, I don't really want to get into that right now, uh, but all I'm saying is that is actually the theory behind it. Voluntarism on the entire economy where the means of production are not owned by anybody. They're still there, they still function the way they always did. But they're not anyone's property. Petty personal belongings? That's fine. That's fine. It's not this, as I say, redistribution of wealth at the point of a gun. Um, and as I say, it's an interesting um, type of anarchism, an interesting type of socialism that doesn't necessarily have to be coercive at all. In real life, of course, we know exactly how that can turn into a, co a coercive situation. But, in theory at least, in theory, it is about as non-coercive as economic activity can get. Not only are there no bosses, but no one is using their wealth to lord it over other people. Because there are other ways to lord it over people besides overt physical power. There is economic power. And the anarcho-syndicalist model, if you ask me, is the one, the form of socialism that is attempting to prevent anyone from exercising any form of economic power over anyone, simply because the means of production, the means of employment, don't belong to anyone. That is about as far from fascism as I can see a socialist system being, um, simply because coercion is completely taken out of it. No human being is treated any differently from anyone else based on wealth because no one actually possesses a great deal of wealth. All the big concerns in society, factories, banks, stores, docks, uh, transit lines, transportation, all this sort of thing, nobody owns that. Everybody has an equal say in how it gets managed and nobody is actually telling anyone else how to do it. This, for some reason, is the anarchist model I find that elicits the most furious debate. And I think that it's because, as I said before, anarcho-syndicalism is the form of socialism that, at least as an ideal, and as a possible ideal, perhaps not in our lifetimes, but as an ideal, as it were, on the horizon, just uh, to say this is what we should be evolving to as a society, this is one that doesn't seem to be going away. In fact, it actually seems to be gaining in, um, in adherence. I won't really call myself an anarcho-syndicalist, in spite of uh, this costume that I made, um, but uh, the, uh, the model does fascinate me. It truly does, and it fascinates an awful lot of people. It, uh, it's very similar to our own model, our own economic model. It's deceptively similar. But no more bosses, no more owners. Thank you.